Hi, this is David Green, and today I'm going to show you how to quickly install and start running SAS on your system. I'm also going to tell you a little bit about how you can organize your files and show you a workflow that makes it easy to work with SAS quickly and conveniently. So to start with, SAS works on a number of different operating systems. The main requirement is that you have Ruby installed. So let's check. So I do a Ruby-V, and I can see that I've got Ruby version 2.0, so I'm good to go. On the other hand, if I do a SAS-V to see if I have SAS installed, I can see that SAS isn't installed yet. Fortunately, installing SAS is very easy. Uh, for the Macintosh, you have to do a sudo in order to install SAS, although on Windows and Linux that may not be necessary. So I'll type the command sudo gem install and then SAS. It didn't ask me for my password because I had recently done a sudo. But here it is installing the SAS gem and then installing the Ruby documentation. And now I can do a SAS-V and I can see that SAS is installed and working properly. So let's see if I can get SAS working in an actual project directory. Now the directory that I'm in is the installing SAS project. And this is how you would typically organize a web project. If I do a tree here, you can see that inside here I have a public directory, inside of which is my CSS directory, which has my styles.css, and an index.html file. And if I do a quick more on the index.html file, you can see that it's just a standard HTML file with a title and a link to the CSS styles CSS file. So let me quickly demonstrate this page running in a browser. So I'm going to bring up a browser. And here in this tab, I'm going to run a script that I have called Simple Server. And this is, runs a little Python server that I have on port 8080. Um, and actually, I've run that in the wrong directory. I need to run that inside of the public directory. So let's go to the public directory and run Simple Server. OK. And now, if I refresh this web browser, I should see this HTML file uh, being loaded properly. And let's just take a look at the CSS and show you that all that it's doing right now is setting the font to a serif font and changing the body color for the text to 006, which is this nice dark blue. So if I wanted to start doing CSS development using SAS so that I could have pre-processing power, what I would want to do in this installing SAS directory is create a directory called SAS. So let's make a directory called SAS. And inside of that directory, let's create a quick SAS file that'll just generate some, uh, some quick and easy SAS. So let's see, I'm going to call it SAS styles dot SCSS. And let's go directly to the SAS site and pull up some sample code that they have. So on the SAS site, you can find the Learn SAS guide. And here they have a number of examples of different uh, techniques for using SAS. The one I'm going to start with here is just this quick SCSS syntax. And you can see what they're doing is they are creating some variables. They are uh, then using those variables inside of their C inside of their SCSS to uh, replace them with the values that are being created up here. So I've created some SCSS, and it's in my SAS directory. In order to make use of that SCSS file, I need to process it so that it generates the CSS I want. That means issuing a SAS command and telling the SAS command what file I want converted and what file I want converted out of it. So the command starts with SAS, and then I type the path to the SCSS file that I want converted, and then I type the path to the CSS file I want generated, which is in public CSS styles.css. Now when I run this command, it's going to overwrite anything that's currently in the CSS file. So it's very important to remember, once you've started using SAS for your workflow, don't do any edits directly in your CSS files. All of your changes need to live in the SAS, because any SAS that you create when you generate 
it's going to overwrite the CSS files. So I run this command. And let's do a tree again. I want to show you something. So here, we've got the directory that we're in. You can see the public directory. And you've got the SAS directory. And you've got the CSS directory inside of public. And here, inside of the CSS directory, you can see that there's the styles.css. It's also created a styles.css.map file. And this is something new with SAS 3.3 and above. Uh, the map file actually makes it more convenient to do some editing inside of the browser. It helps with the developer tools. It's actually pretty powerful stuff. But these things all get published out to the server. So let's take a look at our CSS file that got generated and see what it says. So we can see that the CSS file that got generated basically took the values that were in the SAS file and applied them. There, the font has been set to Helvetica and Sans Serif, and the color has been set to 333, and those with variable values that we had in our SCSS file. There's also a reference to that styles CSS map file. And if we go back to our, to our web browser and we reload this page, we'll see that the styles have been applied. Now, if we wanted to make an edit to the SCSS file that we just created, um, let's bring up Vim again, and let's edit our styles.scss. Let's change the primary color from that simple gray to a dark blue again. Now, if we reload, you'll see that absolutely nothing has changed, and that's because every time that you make a change to your scss file, you have to run your sass command again. Running your sass command will bring up the changes, and you can see this is now changed to a dark blue. But conveniently, SAS has a way of generating automatically every time that you make a change to the SCSS file, and that's using the SAS watch option. So here, I'm going to bring up another terminal window, and let's run the SAS with dash dash watch. And in this case, we're going to type the name of the directory we want watched, which is the SAS directory, and the directory that we want things generated into which is the public CSS directory. Now this is going to run constantly in the background while we're doing our web development. So here, if we go back in, we make some edits to our CSS file. So in this case, um, let's change the font back to a serif font. Now, without doing anything else, all I have to do is reload the browser, and you can see that the changes have been populated out automatically to my CSS file. When you're done doing your development, all you do is publish out your public directory to your web browser, and all of your changes are there.